So over the summer, I made a water methanol injection system. Uh, I decided to put it pre-turbo uh, because post-turbo you'd have to have too many, like a high-pressure pump, a solenoid, and all of this stuff so it doesn't backfeed into the system. And uh, I've been running it, well, basically all summer. So I had it since May. It is such a mess in the engine bay, but here is our reservoir for our water methanol mixture, which is just uh, windshield washer fluid. Um, you buy the generic brand without any bug repellent. So it's basically just water, dye, and the methanol, um, mostly water. And we have feed line is at the bottom it goes into our pump which is down there and the pump is just one of the reservoir pumps from these Volkswagens got one from the junkyard for I think it was like a dollar fifty and then uh, just use some vacuum line it doesn't have to be uh, high pressure rated just because it's not pushing that much pressure um, so feed line is at the bottom it comes up here we tee into a return line there um, and then uh, comes here 90s and then down into this nylon fitting. Uh, I do have a brass version I was just testing out the nylon. It's worked so far and it hasn't broken yet So I left it in there and then uh, from silicone intakes They sell a port system so you can cut a hole into a coupler and It has a threaded port. So now that is a nice threaded hole I need to buy one for the couplers down here or somewhere else so I can uh, put my temperature probe so I don't have to run it in the MAF sensor I want to move it uh, post turbo so we can actually see if it's doing anything um, and then see the IATs uh, accurately what's actually going into the engine but anyway that is the system and it has the return line uh, and it comes back feeds back in here so it basically works just like a fuel system on a car uh, the fuel goes through the fuel pump comes up to the fuel rail um, it builds the certain amount of pressure in the fuel lines and then the rest of it goes back to the tank and that is basically how this thing runs um, and then it is controlled by a hob switch so this guy it is set at, I think, 5 PSI. I have an adjustable one that was set at like 12 to 13 pounds, um, but I really don't live up there with the boost, so um, this thing would click on for like a split second and then turn off. And uh, we have an indicator light. We have the indicator light, that is that blue light that you guys see when I'm doing those videos of the poles that is saying that it is spraying and uh, going and then we have the arming switch it's just this guy so that is on so now it is ready to spray so if that switch saw 5 psi it would start spraying i am not 100 percent sure on how much i am spraying uh i will get the specs on the nozzle it is a misting nozzle like a high pressure misting nozzle i think it was like point oh two millimeters or something like that is a really fine misting nozzle so the droplets are extremely small i've checked all summer long to see if the turbo is starting to corrode or anything because that is the biggest no-no about this whole system according to everyone online um, but nowhere no anything a little bit of blue dye here and there um, just because of the uh, spray that i'm using but otherwise everything has been fine so uh, I will pull the pipe off and show you guys how it works and all of that. And then at some point I do want to actually test and see. So I'll hook up a constant pressure source to it. And we will see how much uh, volume or yeah, the volume of fluid that comes out. Uh, we'll test in our ratio right that I have laying around so we can actually see what I'm at and yeah so currently I really don't have a use for it um, so it was really just to combat the heat that the turbo was producing over the summer originally I was looking through my OBD2 scanner to see the IATs over the summer they were sitting at 180 to 210 uh, Fahrenheit and that is extremely high unless this thing is just reading wrong but I feel like it was pretty accurate because this engine bay is just trapping heat uh, so i went ahead and made this system pre-turbo so we could cool down the charge temperatures because if it's hot here 
where the temperature uh, gauge basically is reading off of, it's going to be extremely hot in the charge pipes post turbo because if you know turbos they get extremely hot. So um, did a couple tests uh, with the system off, drive around, pull over, um, and then just do a hand test, feel the pipe. It was crazy hot and then I do have a, uh, it's like a laser um, thermometer, so point it at the pipe. These are reflective so it doesn't really read correctly but I was getting spikes up to like five, six hundred degrees. And then once the system was all plumbed up, uh, I would arm the system, drive around. Uh, it is set at four PSI there, so if I'm making anything over four PSI, it'll start spraying. Um, same thing, drive around, pull off, feel the pipe, and it was almost cool to the touch, um, like lukewarm, I would rate it at. So the system is obviously doing something. Um, and then I also did check at the intercooler. A big thing is people are afraid it's going to start pooling up in the intercooler, which it's definitely a possibility. But um, if you're spraying little enough, you won't run into that issue. And so um, I never had anything pool up at the bottom or any re residue or anything in the intercooler. Um, the only place I was finding blue dye was uh, between some of the couplers. There was... Uh, when I had the two inch piping, there was a coupler here, um, and then one of the couplers there, and then a little bit at the inlet of the turbo. So don't laugh at how ghetto this is, but it works. It doesn't seem to be a restriction. Um, well, it probably is a restriction, but it works, and <laughs> I haven't had anything get sucked into the turbo yet. So we are chilling. We'll pull off the MAF connector. We will pull off this connector here to the nylon fitting. See, so that is dyed blue. So, yeah. And we can go ahead and pull this thing off. And so, as you can see, that is pretty blue where the sprayer is. And then it does have like a little bit of blue tint on the inside of the pipe as well. But, um, yeah. It works. Alright, so I hooked up the air compressor right on the hose over here. Uh, I will use my modified air chuck. Um, we have it going to a pressure gauge, which I don't think this one is completely accurate, but um, just so we can see. And then we'll have it teed there and it'll feed into the hob switch there. And then uh, once that happens, once it reaches enough pressure, um, it'll pressurize this line with the fluid uh, from the pipe and we can just set this somewhere and then I do have the ratio right here so this thing measures in cc's um, pints fluid ounces um, and then we'll just do that for a minute straight and we'll be able to see uh, how many uh, cc's um, it is pumping out all right, so we'll pressurize the system. And then here is the mist that is coming out of it, which it is really fine. Like, I was willing to put my phone in front of that. Um, so that is what it does. It's hard to see. Let me see if I can get a better better angle for you guys so you guys can actually see yeah anyway uh, now my phone is soaked but <laughs> anyway uh, that is basically how that works so uh, we're gonna go ahead and point that into the cup and uh, we'll just get that on for a minute and we'll see how much fluid uh, how many cc's of fluid if it even starts reading because it's I don't know it might not even start reading but um, yeah we'll see how much fluid it does in a minute so cup is dry as you can see uh, we have the timer set at one minute let me situate all of this stuff, and 
I don't know where to put this ratio right. Give me one second, I'll get this all situated. All right, so it is pretty vertical uh, and it will not miss the cup. I know it looks kind of like it will, but not gonna miss the cup. Uh, so we will pull up that. We got our minute. Uh, we're gonna start, start. have it spray for that minute so I'll periodically just keep spraying um, yeah all right so right at one minute and it stopped spraying right at a minute So we'll stop that. And we are, it doesn't have that measurement, but I would say we're probably at like 25 cc's. Uh, the first number there is 50, uh, right on the bottom there. I don't know if it shows that, but that's a 50 uh, right down there at the bottom. So I'd say it's probably like 25 cc's a minute. Um, which is kind of like what I was aiming for. Um, so in a minute, that much fluid is going into the system, uh, which we're doing pulls for 10, 15 seconds. So uh, tiny, tiny amount, uh, just enough to cool the charge air going into the car. So although the system is a little bit ghetto um, and a little bit janky, uh, it does seem to be working. Uh, 25 cc ish per minute uh, nozzle works just fine i got it off amazon i will put a link in the description uh, just so you guys can see exactly what it is um, and then everything is glued and hose clamped inside so it ain't coming off um, and it seems to be safe so just wanted to give you guys a little overview of that on the car um, you're seeing all these videos under the hood and what is that tank that's what that tank is that's what it does um, although a little bit ghetto, it does seem to be getting the job done and cooling charge air temps, so I'm happy. Alright, so I am currently editing that video, and I wanted to just uh, translate some of those numbers that I put in the video um, and clear up a few things. So, uh, I am not tuned for water methanol, so I'm not tuned to be making more power. I am uh, solely doing it to combat high IATs, um, which technically at this point would not be um, changing the performance of the car because I have the IATs still reading from the MAF sensor at the beginning of the intake. So um, to get it to read lower, I would need to move it uh, post-turbo where I am spraying the water methanol um, pre-turbo so it affects the post-turbo air temperature. So it is after the MAF, before the turbo, um, and the IATs are just reading consistently before everything that I'm doing to combat them. So that's kind of a flaw in the system. And uh, also, uh, I said 25 cc's in a minute. Um, usually they rate these nozzles at gallons per hour, so GPH. Um, so if we did uh, 25 cc's in a minute, um, how many cc's would that be in 60 minutes or an hour? Um, that would be 1,500 cc's in an hour. And then uh, we'll convert that over to gallons. Um, so 1,500 into gallons, it would be 0.396, um, which is basically just 0.4 gallons per hour, which is a pretty small nozzle. I think I could go smaller since I'm not tuned for it, but um, I haven't had any breakup issues or anything weird with the car. Um, only in the cooler temperatures where it's actually not evaporating everything in there. Um, so summer months, it's just so hot. The air is so hot that everything does have a chance to evaporate. On these cooler months, it really isn't necessary. Um, the IETs are in like the 60 degree range so nothing is really um, it is not necessary to be even using that system so 
I haven't really used it that much, um, only in those videos that I was doing the polls for you guys. Um, what else? So, yeah, not tuned for it. Uh, running so little that it's not affecting anything, or at least from what I can tell, it's not affecting anything. Um, to get any benefits of having the car not pull timing, I would need to move the IET sensor post-turbo into one of those uh, couplers or somewhere in the intake tract, um, preferably after the intercooler. And um, what else? Yeah, I could probably use a different uh, media. I could spray a different media. This is just cheap windshield washer fluid. Um, we could be using uh, something because it does have a little bit of detergent detergent in it. Um, we could be using um, like the VP, I forget what it was called, whatever VP makes or the Snow Performance uh, Boost Juice. Um, but yeah, just wanted to clear those things up. Uh, pretty cool system. We'll refine it over the future and get it right. And then one of these days I'll go standalone and we will get the car tuned and all of this stuff won't be so ghetto. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.